sure. intro you, because this is really important, especially if you're in business. 80, and well, you'd know this, 80% of businesses failing in the first year. It's no revelation. All that blood, that sweat, the tears, just sometimes do not seem to be enough. You need sound advice. Now, Bob Pritchard has helped people like uh, companies like American Express, Coca-Cola, even the Sydney Swans, to realise business potential. It's great advice. Well, he's with us this morning uh, to help businesses of all sizes. Bob Pritchard joins us. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. We were so engrossed in our chat. We were. I got carried away. Now, um, you're an Aussie bloke. You've lived overseas. In fact, you're living in Los Angeles at the moment and have done for... Yep. 20 years. Wow. 20 years. And you've worked with some huge companies, boards of directors, helped some big names. What is it that they can get from you that they can't get from all their other people? I think the difference is that once you work in a company that you um, you become channeled into their corporate culture if you like so you tend not to think outside the box you tend not to uh, think about what other companies are doing and you, so you don't keep up with the trends you tend to do if, if you're the marketing director of coca-cola and you put something up and they say no and then you put something else up and they say no sooner or later you only suggest what you know the company is going to buy hmm. where somebody like me comes in and says you've got to do this and they go wow how fantastic is that hmm. and then you talk to the marketing guy and he says I've been suggesting that for five years and they've always told me to go away. Mm. So I think because you're an outside consultant, you get an opportunity to do things that uh, perhaps somebody inside yeah, the company... but also, um, as someone on the outside, and sometimes it's... I'm not saying it's easy, but when you're in the outside of somebody else's life or business, yes. you can see a bit of the obvious. And that's what we want to get to today. I think that's today. true. OK, small business. I know a lot of people who I constantly um, uh, run into are in small business. A lot of them work from home. What are some of the biggest mistakes? Well, I think the, the biggest mistake is that they don't differentiate themselves from their competitors. Mm -hmm. um, if you go out and you're just selling the same thing as your competitors are selling, then you're not differentiating yourself and therefore there's, nothing, there's no reason why somebody should go to you instead of your competitor. So you need to create a stamp that's all your own. And uh, that can't be usually done around the product because other people are selling the same product. So you just need to come up with an angle that makes you different than your competitors. It's not easy, but you can do it. Mm. Now, another tip that you've got, and this is a great hardware example, if you can give it to me. Oh, um, knowing what business you're in, mm -hmm. it's critical to know what business you're in. And most people think that what they do is the business they're in. Mm. Um, I, uh, I sell computers, therefore I'm in the computer business. Um, and a, I think a, a perfect example is the hardware business. If I, said to most, if I said to you, what business is Bunnings in? You'd say, hardware. Well, I did, nobody wakes up this morning and says, I have to buy a hammer today. You know, mm. that's my big ambition. People buy a hammer because they've got a problem. Mm. So you go to Bunnings because you have a problem to solve. So a hardware store really isn't in the hardware business, they're in the problem solving business. Mm -hmm. A totally different business. We've got a client in the States where was a hardware company mm -hmm. and we didn't change anything about the way they did business. All we did was say to people in the advertising, if you have a problem around the home, we have an expert who can fix it. Gotcha. And sales went up over 400% without changing the business at all, mm -hmm. simply because they're in the same business. Another tip uh, relating to business and hooking people in. Every decision that somebody makes is made emotionally. That's mm. the way the body works. We make a decision emotionally and then we justify it pragmatically. And it's like I say to people in an audience, hands up anybody who's got a Mercedes. And you'll get somebody, why do you have a Mercedes? Because um, it's safe. Rubbish. They didn't buy a Mercedes because it's safe. If they wanted a safe car, they'd buy a Volvo, put $100,000 in their pocket. Why do they buy a Mercedes? Ego. Mm. It's about ego. Why do women wear makeup? Hope. You haven't seen me at six years, have you? <laughs> hope. It's emotional. Really? They, they, I'm not sure can I feel in the right cracks? Do I feel great in the morning? <laughs> Hoping I'll look better. <laughs> it's emotion. <laughs> Why do you wear makeup? Because I hope I'll look better. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, it's emotional. We, so, we we hear a yeah. lot about um, we hear a lot about customer service these days. And again, doesn't matter what business you're in, it seems you're always in sales, which means relationship and customer service. Yeah, most people make the mistake of continually advertising for new customers mm. where the current customers they have are much easier to retain mm -hmm. because they like you, you can get sell things to them at a higher price 
and it's about a fifteenth of the cost of acquiring a new customer. So the focus should be on the current people. The current people that so you've how got. do you find that out from them? Because you've been doing business with them, you're doing it the same way for a little bit, uh, amount of time. How do you find out what they really want? I think that you, you just have to ask them. See, most people don't have dialogue with their customers. They'll sell something to their customer and then they're gone. But mm. you need to have an ongoing dialogue. You need to find out what customers really mm. want. What do you send out a survey? No, thing? talk to them face to face. Yeah. Talk to customers face to face. And as far as customer service goes, it's not just, if I go in and buy that, mm. and I'm perfectly happy with the service and I'm perfectly happy with the glass, why should I go back to that same shop to buy another glass? Because all I've got is what I'm entitled to, good service mm -hmm. and a good glass. Mm -hmm. So today, to get people to come back to you, you've got to knock their socks off. They've got to say, mm -hmm. wow, that was fantastic. It was a great experience. That's where I want to go back. But people don't. They don't give people that fantastic... Mm -hmm. just, just ask yourself, if you if you've did 10 things yesterday, mm. how many of those transactions that you ended into yesterday did you walk out of there saying, Wow, that was great. Mm. The answer? Yeah. None. Mm. So you've got to make somebody else remember the experience. You've got to remember the experience. Yeah, you've got to work a lot harder doing it these days. Um, but it, it's, it's great to catch up with you. And thanks for the, a lot of those tips because they're um, so interesting for people who haven't had your experience, dealt with it. But whether it's a big business or a small one, the principles are still the same. And thanks they're the for same, the, but it's mm. very tough. It, yeah. It's tough out there, so you've got to work hard. Yeah, and key. you've got to try and enjoy it. You, you have to enjoy it, <laughs> don't you? Bob.